This program is supported in part by Mass Humanities, improving civic life in Massachusetts through grant making and public programs since 1975. On the 16th in the morning, we weighed in company with the Washington and sailed for Santiago. So when Columbia and Lady Washington came into uh, what well, they're calling Porto Prio Bay, they were right in the harbor here. Kendrick went off up to swing around here to the um, up the hill to ask the governor if they could use the Isle of Whales, as they called it, this uh, little island right here. And the purpose of that was so they could pull up all the 140 goats and everything else that they got from Mayo to uh, slaughter them, salt them down, basically uh, just work on provisions. They took the sails off in Colombia and created tents um, so they could do all their work right there. They're here in Praia to be able to not only take care of all the provisioning of the ship from the goats that they purchased in Mayo, but also to be able to fill up their water casks. They've got a long journey ahead of them all around the tip of South America, and so they've got to make sure that they have fresh water. Starting on the 19th, Kendrick orders that everything be taken out of Columbia and reshuffled. They found that the water casks that had been filled up in Boston uh, were at the bottom of the ship as compared to much heavier ballast for stability. We're going to see if we can catch a uh, boat out to uh, the Isle of Quails, home of Columbia, for a month. Kendrick's the one who's uh, the one overseeing all of this, the filling of the water cask, the reshuffling of things. So on December 7th, Kendrick fires the first mate, Simeon Woodruff. Woodruff would have normally had the responsibility in Boston of loading the ship, including the placement of where the water casks were. Well, he, he could have made a mistake. Uh, or, in, in reloading everything, he could just be busting chops on his officers as well uh, and, and, and trying to demonstrate who's, who's top dog. Uh, you know, uh, you get really funny social dynamics between officers on board these ships. He offers Woodruff a choice. He says that you can either continue as a passenger on board this long cruise, or he can be the assistant to the cook. Both of these were just completely humiliating options, and Woodruff refuses. And he asks if he can go over to the Lady Washington and stay there. Kendrick says fine, but he orders that no one give Woodruff any assistance. Woodruff has to sleep the night out on the deck with not even a blanket. The next morning, Woodruff decides to leave at that point, and so that's the last we see of Woodruff. Saying the captain screwed up is, is never a popular way to, to move ahead uh, on board these vessels, and the captain probably certainly isn't going to admit that he screwed up. Um, on the other hand, you know, maybe it was the mates and Kendrick wanted to just make sure it was done right. I, you know, it, it, these are just one of the many, many things that happen on board these small vessels. People get a little squirrely. It's uh, 85 feet uh, and that's your world. Yeah. And it's uh, hard to get away from people and, uh, you know, uh, it can get very unpleasant. This gentleman was of known abilities as a navigator and greatly experienced as a seaman. He had commanded several ships out of London. He was an officer under the great Captain James Cook on his last voyage to the Pacific Ocean. This worthy gentleman was my sincere friend and the loss of whom I regretted past expression. Woodruff was a gunner's mate, which at its best is a mid-level crew member. Certainly not an officer. Well, maybe he was forced on to Kendrick by the owners. Yeah, well, well, the heart of this issue is something called ship's articles, which is a contract you sign as a seafarer. It, uh, and and these, this contract's probably still around somewhere. It says in, in what capacity you, you will serve on this vessel and at what rate of pay. Uh, and right up until 1916, uh, it was determined in American law that seamen who signed ship's articles had forfeited their liberty. Uh, so essentially, uh, to call the ship's captain a master really was the case. It was, it was a servant-master sort of relationship, uh, and you were not free to leave. There were a couple things that would happen. If you were successful in deserting, you're going to lose, you're going to forfeit all your pay. You're also going to lose all your possessions that are left on the vessel. 
he could send local law authorities, say the local sheriff, after the deserter and could actually have them lodged in jail until such time as the ship sailed. Uh, and then after the ship uh, uh, hoisted anchor, uh, they would take this poor soul back to the ship, dump him on deck unceremoniously, and uh, the captain could do with him as he wished. Uh, and that could, it could include flogging. During that month on the Isle of Quails, they take on a few more people. Two European sailors sign on to the Columbia, and Robert Gray takes on a local, a young kid named Marcus Lopes, who serves as a cabin boy on the Lady Washington. Okay, if he's a young boy in Cape Verde in uh, the 18th century, 18th century, yes, he's probably from a, um, a poor family. Um, it's, uh, he survived, well, all of his life there's been famine and drought and, uh, and disease in Cape Verde. Um, the years just before this voyage, um, some of the islands had lost half their population to disease and famine. So, um, and also, it's, it's, Santiago is a major slave trading port. So Marcus, Marcus, if he signed aboard as a cabin boy, he was free. But uh, around him, there were all slave plantations. And most of the island of Santiago was enslaved. So he's, uh, he was looking for, he was looking to get out. He was looking for freedom. He was looking for uh, an opportunity. Oh, the only thing he's knowing is he's getting away from here. Right. Yeah, he's getting away from Santiago. He's getting away from this, this, this poverty and this death and the disease. And he's going out to sea, and hopefully, uh, Something else will happen. Dr. Roberts alleging a decline of health made application to Captain Chendrick for his discharge. This was refused except he would pay his passage to this place. But this he was either unable or unwilling to do. Kendrick had gotten word that uh, from the governor to come and visit him. Uh, and he goes there and finds out that the doctor, Mr. Roberts, was asking for protection and uh, was uh, wanting to be discharged. Kendrick, having every right, claimed him as a deserter and said he wanted him back. The governor refused. So Kendrick, on his way back down to the Columbia, encounters Roberts. So he's coming along, sees Roberts, knows he needs to have his surgeon back, he's a deserter, pulls out his sword. All of a sudden, Portuguese soldiers come up, say, no, you can't be marching this guy back to your ship. And he's under the protection of the governor. Kendrick puts the sword away. Roberts goes on his merry way, and Kendrick has to return in a foul mood back to the Columbia without his ship surgeon. Now, the problem is that the governor should have delivered back to Kendrick uh, Dr. Roberts. He was a deserter. He had signed the papers. But Kendrick says, no, nobody uh, else can go back on shore. He's worried that the governor is actually going to hold um, any member of the crew hostage in exchange for the baggage that Dr. Roberts had brought. But Roberts didn't bring anything ashore at the time when he came on, on shore. It was just, oh, I'm not feeling well. I'd like to go ashore. They have to all of a sudden go from spending way too much time here to hurry up, let's get everything uh, put back on the Lady Washington and the Columbia, finish up getting the goats, uh, forget about finishing up getting all our fresh water that we needed here. And then right as they're about to leave, a Danish East Indiaman a ship uh, sends word that Roberts is there and uh, he's willing to come back, provided that the captain not flog Roberts. And that was a very common punishment. And uh, if they hadn't flogged Roberts for deserting, you know, that, that would have set a very bad example, as bad as flogging was. And uh, he says no. And Roberts asks, if he, can he have at least his uh, linen back, his, you know, just his basic uh, uh, bedding and stuff. And uh, Kendrick says no. They can't even get the uh, anchor up in time. They cut the line, leaving the anchor and the cable there. And they get out of Dodge. This island is under the government of Portugal, as are all the group of Cape Verde Islands. As we stood out of the bay, an American brig anchored, but we did not speak her. And they took off. The next stop was the Falkland Islands.
has the largest concentration of abandoned cannons and bars of any place on the earth. And it's a bad combination, you got to imagine. But, I mean, we've got one cannon, one bar, two bars. Like, we, we find them everywhere. <laughs> The world is not a